they're back home and safe. So glad Joe made it back. But for Louisiana volunteer Brittany Wynn, memories of Haiti are hard to forget. Everything's just level. I remember seeing three huge concrete slabs just stacked on top of each other and somebody said that used to be a three-story building. Three members of Shreveport First United Methodist Church were in Haiti to work at an orphanage when the earthquake hit on January 12th. The house started to shake and it kind of looked like jello. 140 miles from the epicenter, the orphanage had only minor damage, but getting out of Haiti would be a challenge. We saw the tents hundreds and thousands of people on the streets and sleeping out on the streets. Three days after the quake, mission volunteer Nikki Sorensen and the others set out on a four and a half hour drive to Port-au-Prince, across roads sometimes blocked by rubble and quake survivors. Every time we came to a place that we couldn't pass, people pointed with smiles to the right direction for us to get out. The heart and the kindness of the people to help us get to safety was amazing. Sorensen's husband, Mark, works with young adults at the church. He received occasional updates via text messages and phone calls. My nerves were completely on edge. I couldn't watch the news much. Four days after the quake, church members celebrated the safe return of the team and that no one at the orphanage was hurt. Those kids are all safe. Um, so praise God. But the earthquake created thousands of new orphans. My biggest concern is food at this point. The people of Haiti also need medical help, and the church plans to go back in February with a team of doctors. I don't think you could travel through Haiti without going, we have to do something before the earthquake, and now afterwards, you just don't have a choice. I'm so thankful and so overjoyed to be home. I'm so thankful for all the prayers that got me back home. But then I think about the people who don't have a home to go back to.